Thank you to all my supporters. Links are down below if you want to help out the channel. Hey guys, today we're going to look at how to optimize renders and get everything down to make a super fast render time for your render. Okay, so let's not waste any time. I'm going to be using a custom made uh, scene inside Blender. If you want to go download that, uh, feel free to do that in the link in the description. Okay, so here it is. Uh, here is our scene. We basically just have a wall that's textured uh, to be brick and everything. Uh, so just a super simple scene just so we can see the differences uh, between the render settings Okay, so first of all, let's get a baseline and render this out Okay, so here is the default render with all the default settings inside of blender I didn't change anything uh, other than setting the uh, render engine to cycles You can see that we're starting out with a uh, 2 minutes and 17 seconds now for such an easy scene like this uh, this is not really good. Uh, two minutes per frame is going to add up a lot over time. So let's look at some ways we can get that down. So first thing that we can do, and probably the biggest thing that we can do, is set it from CPU to GPU compute. Uh, and that's going to render it on the GPU instead of CPU. And the GPU has a lot more power than the CPU. Now there are actually different methods of rendering on the GPU. We can come up to Edit, Preferences, and then go into the system over here. And we have uh, at the top the cycle render devices. We have four options right here. So none would be just rendering on the CPU, uh, but CUDA, we can actually click that. And now if we come and render this, we can see that we already got our times uh, basically cut in half to 52 seconds about uh, just with putting it on the GPU. Now CUDA is really good if you don't have an RTX enabled card. However, if you do, uh, we have another option that we can work with. Uh, so let's go back to the edit, preferences, system, and then up here we have this optics option and you do need a RTX card, so a 2060 or better. But if you do, I highly recommend using optics because it'll speed up your renders exponentially. So let's go ahead and render out an image with optics. Okay, so just like that, we uh, got our render time uh, cut in half again to about 22 seconds. Uh, so optics just optimizes that uh, so much uh, using those RTX cores inside of uh, any uh, compatible GPU. Okay, so next uh, let's look at the sample count. Uh, now by default it's on uh, 128 for your renders. Uh, however, you can change around that. Uh, just to show you, I'm just going to put mine down to a 64. Now changing your sample count, the lower you go, the less quality your final render is going to be. So I highly recommend you find a uh, area that you're comfortable with, uh, how it looks versus how it performs. So let's render this out. Okay, so we got this down to 15.18 seconds uh, just by changing the sample count. Now you really can't tell right here, but there is a lot more noise in this image uh, compared to before. And that is what you're gonna get with uh, lower sample counts. You're gonna get a more noisy image uh, that might not look as good. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna keep my render uh, sample count at a 128 uh, just so we can get a baseline. Okay, so next we have uh, the adaptive sampling. If we just turn that on, we can just leave all these default values there. Now adaptive sampling, will basically just assign sample counts to different parts of the images uh, depending on what parts need it more and what parts need it less. Now let's see how much that took off. Okay, so keep in mind this is a higher sample count than before. However, we were still able to get that uh, render time lower. Uh, and that is just thanks to the adaptive sampling. Okay, so the next thing that we can do is uh, mess around with some of these light paths. Uh, now here are the default values uh, that Blender automatically assigns. This basically just means uh, how many times the light is gonna pass through or bounce off an object depending on what uh, is being used. So for instance, uh, if you have a lot of transparency in your scene, so you have uh, many different panes of glass, basically how many times is light going to pass through that glass until it uh, basically doesn't get passed through that glass anymore. And so by default, it's set to eight. Basically, if you have eight panes of glass and you shine a flashlight through it, uh, it'll go through all eight. However, if you have nine panes, it'll go through all eight of the first eight and then it'll stop after the last one. That's just an easy way to think about it. Uh, same with all the other ones, but in their respective categories. Uh, so I like to actually set all these uh, down to three. I find that three is a nice little baseline uh, to work with. Uh, so I'm just gonna set the first five to be three. This last one is automatically set uh, by Blender at zero. So I'm just gonna keep it at zero. We don't really need to increase that. And you can also come down here uh, and affect the clamping. I know that affects uh, the render time some, but I don't really use it that much. And then the caustics, uh, basically you only want the reflective and the refractive caustics if you're doing anything with water or anything that has a lot of reflection, such as a scene at a bar with a lot of wine bottles or anything. Uh, those are really the only two examples where I can think that you wanna keep these on. So let's turn these off. 
and render out a image. Okay, so this is such a simple scene that we really didn't get too much out of it. However, if you're doing a more complex scene, uh, then doing the light paths will actually affect it uh, quite a bit uh, depending on how uh, complex your scene is. Okay, so next thing that we can do is actually simplify our render a little bit. Uh, so if we hit this simplify over here, and it does a lot of stuff. Uh, you can play around with some of these values. However, I'm just gonna leave it on default. And it'll basically uh, try to simplify th some things that it thinks that uh, Blender doesn't really need uh, to see and that won't really affect your render. So let's go ahead and render out an image. And so here is what that did uh, for this specific render. We only got a 0.1 second off of our render. But again, that is so uh, minuscule just because this scene is so simple. Okay, so last but not least, we can affect the performance setting. So coming down to performance, uh, we have this tile size this is down here. Now by default, it's set to be a uh, tile X and Y of 64 by 64. And that is good for uh, rendering on your CPU. However, if you are rendering on your GPU, you want it to be a little bit bigger. The rule of thumb is to do uh, 512 by 512 if you're rendering on your GPU. So we'll put that in. And then 64 by 64 if you're rendering on your CPU. So now with that change, let's render this out. Okay, so here it is. Here's our final thing that we did. Uh, we went from what, two minutes, uh, 17 or 16 16 seconds uh, all the way down to 14 seconds and the quality hasn't really changed inside the render so we got all of this down uh, to just 14 seconds okay guys so that's pretty much it now let's go into a very complex scene and see the differences between the default values and our optimized values Okay, so this is a scene you can download on blender.org. Link is in the description if you want to do this. Now I have come over here and set all these values back to their default values uh, that Blender automatically comes with. And without changing anything, let's go ahead and render out an image just to see how long it takes. Okay guys, so you can see uh, by default with no settings change inside of Blender, we got uh, 10 minutes and 16 seconds per frame. Now if you're doing an animation that has like 240 frames, this time is going to add up a lot and you might be spending two or three days just rendering out your final animation. And on top of that, you can still see back here we have a lot of noise and everything and that just doesn't look good. Uh, there are many ways we can get this time to be down and it look better. Okay, so now let's do all of our optimizations that we just learned about. Uh, so first of all, device to GPU compute. We're going to keep the sample count to a 128 just for this. Now we're going to turn adaptive sampling on, just leave the default values there. Then for light paths, again, we're just going to change all these down to three, leaving the last one on zero. And then the reflective and the refract caustics we can turn off. Finally, we can just simplify this. And then in the performance tab, since we're running on a GPU, we can set 512 by 512. Okay, so now we are actually ready to render this out. Before though, I want to make sure that I am on optics. Uh, so let's go to edit, preferences, system, and then optics right up here. And then make sure I have my GPU uh, selected so that is true. And now let's render this image out to see how much it went down. Okay guys, so you can see that our render uh, finished with about 32 seconds. Uh, so that is really good. I mean, I don't know how many uh, times less that is. And you can still see that we have a pretty nice looking image uh, as the result. Now, I do want to point out that this uh, image looks a little bit different than the uh, one we did in 10 minutes. Uh, let me kind of flip back and forth. So here's the one that we just rendered out with all the optimizations finished. And then now if I click over, uh, this is the one that took about 10 minutes uh, to render. And you can see this looks a lot uh, more realistic. You can especially tell in these kind of corridors right here, if I kind of flip back and forth, you can see that uh, basically this has a nice little warm hue, uh, basically all the reflections down here. And then this does not, and that might have to do with the light paths. So if I was going back, I might change around some of the light paths or uh, something to get that effect. But I just wanted to point that out, that it's really a balancing act uh, between time it takes to render and the actual uh, output that you get. Okay, so if that surprised you, there is one more step that we can do to get uh, the performance to the best that I know how to do. And that is actually using the new experimental feature inside Blender uh, Cycles X. Now I made a video on Cycles X, you can watch that down in the description below. Okay, so now let's open up this scene in the experimental version uh, Blender 3. 3.0. Okay, so we are on Blender uh, 3.0 Alpha. Uh, you can download that in the uh, video description. Let's go ahead and open up our scene. Now this 3.0 Alpha has a big feature and that is actually Cycles X. Cycles X is basically a super optimized version of Cycles that tries to get the render uh, times lower uh, than ever before. So really the biggest thing that has changed inside of Cycles X is that now instead of rendering out uh, specific tiles one by one, it now renders out the whole picture as a whole. So let's go ahead and optimize this. We can go to GPU Compute. 
adaptive sampling, light pass all the way down to three. We can turn the reflective and refractive caustics off and then simplify. And finally, in the performance tab, uh, you will notice that we no longer have tile sizes. And again, that is because in uh, Cycles X, there are no tiles that be, are rendered. Instead, the whole image is rendered, so there is no need for tile sizes. So there is nothing else we can do. Uh, let's go ahead and render out a image just to see what it does. Okay, so just like that, we got a render time of 24 seconds, and you can even see that uh, some of the light in the corridor has come back, but that is just insane. We went from basically 10 minutes all the way down to 24 seconds with just one frame. Now that's going to help you a lot inside of Blender when you're doing animations and everything. Okay guys, so that is everything that I've learned how to decrease render times while uh, maintaining uh, some pretty good quality. Let me know what you think or if you have any other ways to decrease render times. We have a Patreon and a Buy Me A Coffee, links are down in the description for those. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.